Hello, aloha. Here we are. This is uh, Think Tech Hawaii, and uh, this is the program, The State of the State of Hawaii. And today we have a really special guest uh, who's uh, on her way into the role of CEO at heart, and it's Lori Kahikina. And uh, we have the the joy of uh, the season in being able to chat with her here today about what she's doing as she approaches it and how she's thinking about what she's going to do. So welcome. Thank Lori. you. Thank you. Thank you, CEO. For <laughs> Lori. Yeah. Well, yeah. good. Well, I, um, I wanted to ask you uh, to uh, feel free to insert, you know, any any comments you want or take or express priorities because I am going to ask the usual kinds of questions, which are first of all, of course, if the situation is in disarray. So, uh, as we are all uh, pretty well knowledgeable about, or at least know about, and the audience knows about this, and uh, so why don't you talk a little bit? about it to us as how you see it and what the circumstances are you're going into and maybe how you're going to manage that. And I'll help you get through that second part, the management oh, part. Okay. Thank you. So um, it is a new challenge for me. Um, uh, I've been very clear. I don't have transportation experience, but I do have infrastructure um, experience coming from Department of Environmental Services. Our wastewater consent decree program is, is well over $5 billion. So it's not a single project like rail is, but it's uh, multiple hundreds of projects that um, comprise the $5 billion, whether it's utility relocation or upgrading our sewer lines or the treatment plants. So I have construction and engineering experience, but transportation, I will need assistance, but I'm assuming part has um, within embedded within itself transportation experts that I can rely heavily on, whether it's um, staff, uh, city staff or consultants that, that are on board already. So I, I hope to, once I get in, roll up my sleeves, understand what are all of the issues. I know we are already way behind schedule and over budget, so I can't go back in time and fix that, but I hope to try and make things better going forward. ENV was successful in meeting all of our consent decree deadlines and staying on budget. So I'm hoping I can bring um, some of that perspective to heart. Well, given um, that you are gonna be working with the board, have uh, you related to them or are you in touch with them? Uh, can you tell us how you feel about the board? And sure. The so, so I met them um, just last month as I was interviewing for the position um, so I don't, I don't know any of them prior, um, maybe once or twice I've met with, with them just in our um, previous experience, like for example, Joe Uno was actually a consultant of ours on, a sub-consultant of ours on one of our projects, so I met him once. Um, of course, Kathy Sokugawa and John Nouchi, they are city directors, so uh, of course I worked closely with them. But prior to that, I, I don't, I didn't really know any of the, the previous board members until I started um, interviewing with them. Mm -hmm. How does it feel? Does it look like you've got some, some, some relationship or you're developing relationship, but do you have any click there, you know, what's oh, that feel they, like? All of them have been extremely supportive. Um, when I was interviewing interviewing with them, I made it so clear. I know what um, some of my shortcomings are, especially, uh, like I mentioned, the lack of transportation. Um, I, I don't have a relationship with um, the FTA or state legislatures, so I, I'm going to rely heavily on them or others to help bridge that gap where, where I have shortcomings, but they have all been wonderful. And when you look at their backgrounds, they have a wealth of knowledge. So I expect to be tapping into their experiences and how they can help me. Um, when, when, they, when they did the vote, so they, they do need eight out of the nine votes for, for me to be uh, selected. And the only one that did not vote for me was Kiko Bukowski. But I, when I met with him prior, he was completely honest with me about that. And he says, nothing personal, Lori. It's, I don't think now is the right time to change the CEO. And I said, you know, as long as you're blunt and honest with me, I'm the same way. That's all I can ask. And 
he was true to his word. So I, I texted him. I said, you know, I understand your 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 feelings, Kiko, and and I completely respect it. So he was honest with me. So that's all I could ask. <laughs> well, th- thanks for sharing that. Yeah. I, I found some honesty and <laughs> and being straightforward. And I, I yeah. bring you're you're obviously stimulating some of that. That's yeah. really. Good. You know, I, I was thinking um, to go from easy to complicated, but when I started realizing um, and questioning you that there are no easy <laughs> topics, right. and especially it came to my mind when I thought, well, what about the federal side of things? Is yes. there, and then I thought, well, that's, that's pretty black and white, right? Well, no, because we have a changing administration. So um, are you funded now by the Trump administration and going to shift over? I mean, can, do you know? Um, so a uh, little bit I know about the, the federal side and our funding, there is a um, full funding grant agreement. And I kind of liken that to ENV. We had a federal consent decree that we are required to do X number of projects by certain dates. And they all had deadlines. I, I liken it to that. And we are to adhere to that, which is the full um, from Kapolei all the way to Alamona Shopping Center. So other reporters asked me, what is your intentions? Are you going to pause? I said, we have to get all the way to Alamona Shopping Center, whether it's phases because of the funding issues. But uh, right now, um, my understanding is FDA has withheld monies because they wanted to see certain things from heart, um, certain um, progress and... and um, um, yeah, they just wanted us to meet certain milestones and, and we haven't hit it. So I understand why they are withholding the funds. They have to protect their funds. But there was $250 million that was to lapse at the end of this year. And I understand um, that thank you to our congressional delegation up there, especially SHOTS, they were able to get that extended one more year to December of next year. So thank <laughs> Thankfully, those funds are still there. We, we haven't received it, but at least it's not lapsing. That's quite a bit of money, $250 million. Well, I, I laud you for staying on top of that because it all slips into the U.S. Treasury very, very quickly. <laughs> Supposed to, but um, the um, also it's it's encouraging to hear you say Ala Moana since that's been a, a huge concern and confusion, and most many people think it's only going to Middle Street, and then the Kakaakos are uh, up in uh, their issues, and uh, so Ala Moana, uh, you know, at the level of what would we all like to have, I, that's certainly the, the the first step. But um, on that way, I mean, in addition to the money, then Lori, what about all of the land issues and the condemnations? And so how, how are you approaching um, those issues if you are yet? Right. Or no, so I'm not approaching it yet. I need to get in and, and fully understand where we add um, the utility relocation is what's what's the critical point right now, right there in Dillingham. And, and actually, ENV has a project right there. So I'm, I'm fully aware of how tight that corridor is, trying to squeeze everything in one space and also adhere to the city standards. So by having to adhere to the standards, there might be additional rights of way takes, which causes um, additional monies and time. But I won't fully understand the extent of that until I get in there and start um, acclimating myself and looking at all of the information and data available. Well, the, uh, uh, our CEO, um, um, uh, and I'm having a <laughs> block on his name, Jim, <laughs> um, uh, he pointed out that uh, getting that corridor uh, carved out is truly monumental, especially given the turns that have to be made because the the technical issues, which you, you have background in all of this, but as you know, it's like it, you have to have way huge amounts of land to be able to move a train in a curve or make, to make a, make a turn. That, that radius, that correct radius, exactly. How, that, are you, how do you feel about that? What, how, how was how does that look to you as uh, with the engineering background and oh like- uh, maybe I'm not understanding the question. So are you talking about the the guideway how it's going to curve? Um, I understand the route is pretty set, 
Um, although the design has not been done for the guideway, right now we're just working on the utility relocation so that at least the guideway post can come, the columns can come through, but I don't have intentions of changing the alignment. Um, maybe tweak it here and there so that we can kind of accommodate the, the utilities underground, but I hope I answered your question. Yeah, I'm thinking, well, that's laid out. What it sounds like you're saying is that that route is, is laid out. Yes. I've already been considered. There are no more areas where you have to fight with um, the the big high-rise builders. I mean, Howard Hughes. Oh. <laughs> I mean, is Howard Hughes in the way? <laughs> oh, uh, you, you know that. I guess that goes back to your other question about right-of-way takes. I, I think all along the corridor, there's there's you know property owners that we're going to have to deal with, whether it's Howard Hughes, the university, other uh, private um, owners. I, but I don't know what they are right now, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I was uh, going to go down to the city issues now and um, and ask about, uh, see, here again, uh, there's no easy question and no easy answer because all of that's just changing and our new mayor is yet to be even sworn in. Yeah. So um, I'm sure you know the other, the, our current mayor, Caldwell, and those issues, have you talked to him? What has he been able to help you with? Uh, with Mayor Caldwell? or a uh, mayor like Blangiardi? Well, I was going to ask about both because okay. like Biden, he kind of has to get information. From <laughs> and then he can go, and you, I was thinking you two are like straddling. Straddling, correct, correct. So I, I'm very familiar with uh, Mayor Caldwell and where he stands and what the issues were, especially with the city departments. Um, so my goal is to... Um, rebuild trust between Hart and the city departments. I mean, I'm actually on one side of it, right? With myself, with Board of Water Supply, DPP and DTS. And I do have good relationships with the city departments right now. Um, so I wanna ensure them that whatever trust they have with me now, I want it to continue with if I, when I go to Hart um, and also establish the trust with the, the other utilities that say HECO or the communication utilities. But um, Mayor Caldwell, he, he did share with me some of his concerns. Um, of course, how long it's taking to do the plans um, and of course to get the permits and the funding and the delays in schedule. So I, I do understand his concerns. When I did meet with Mayor Lech Blangiardi and Mike Formby, um, they were very supportive of, of me and the project. And they said, however we can help, um, they're, they're right there with me. So I truly appreciate that. Well, that's, you've covered, uh, you know, the, the important players. I mean, Mike Formby is a supportive of rail, as I understand it. Yes. And uh, he would, he was on your side. And so he's going to be a close connection for yes, you. Absolutely. And, and he was actually in these shoes before. So, and, and as a board member, so I'm going to be tapping him quite a bit to understand um, um, the history and some of the issues that he encountered when he was in, in my shoes. Well, does, um, does Blangiardi, uh, Rick, does Rick Blangiardi also feel that way because he's coming in now without that kind of a background, correct? So, yes. Yeah. Uh -oh. So he is fully supportive of the rail and, and going all the way to um, Ala Moana Shopping Center. So I'm going to need the city support, not just on the technical side, whether it's um, the permittings, but it's also on the funding. You know, we have to work as partners. So I, I'm looking forward to, to working with them and, and truly, truly humbled by their support. Well, that is very good news. I'm thinking now, like I'm, my heart goes out to you, but also to Rick Blanchiardi. Yes, because yes. That's broad. <laughs> you know, these roles require you to be, and certainly him. I mean, uh, but he's got Mike Hornby, right? So do you see yes. that? That probably is the key to success. There. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, hopefully um, things are. And what about with um, the relationships with the state? So I um, like the legislatures, I don't have um, relationships with the state legislatures, so I'm going to need help with that. And, and the board members are, are willing to help me with that. The state 
um, Department of Transportation, I do have uh, good relationships with them. So I'm hoping that will also help to move the project along. Well, I, I, not, I interviewed Rick Blangiardi for uh, running for mayor. And uh -huh. one of the questions I had for him was how, how was he going to relate to the state? Because of we, we're looking at, again, the landscape is changing rapidly, but there was um, the indication that there wasn't going to be much money for states. Right. That, that was very, very frightening. Especially, it is. It is frightening. Yeah. Uh, with the GET and the TAT, um, of course, the assumptions when the project first started or, or when the GET and TAT was, was affected, there was assumptions of how much the project would be receiving quarterly and annually, and it has dropped significantly because of COVID. And it does you know, worry me quite a bit. That's one thing I made clear to the board members, I've never had to deal with at ENG. We are self-sufficient. All of our funding comes from the sewer rates uh, fees that people pay. And we've always had enough monies to do our projects. Um, we, we use our funds prudently. So this is, this is a new ball game for me, honestly. Well, th that is very honest. And um, I mean, you have a lot on your plate, but I mean, you have many, many resources, as you said, in this at the start to, to, yes. to utilize these, these, uh, these colleagues who are so experienced and are willing to be in the, in the world with you. Um, that, that is incredible. Well, I just think that um, one of the issues, a bit under the fright, continues because I'm sure that our money, our budget situation is not going to get better, even exactly. with, the, with the feds coming around a little bit more. I think, you know, we're going to have more pain. Yes. And so what are the kinds of things that you can do to moderate that? What what kinds of skills do you bring um, to, to working budgets down? In right. ENV, um, I scrutinize the budgets very carefully, um, even during construction. So whenever there's a change order, all change orders needed to come through me at the director's level. They need to justify. And we rarely went over. Normally, when we budget a project, we have a set dollar amount that the contract goes out for, and we budget in 10% um, for contingencies. And we had 92 consent decree projects and only 14 of them went over that 10% contingency. And, but the overall, when you total all 92 projects, the total was $1.2 billion. And even with those 14 going over the 10%, the total of those 92 projects still came in under the 1.2 billion. So um, I'm very familiar with, with budget budgets and staying within budgets and I'm hoping to take that over to heart like, like I said I can't go back in time and and get us back on on budget but I'm hoping the estimates that are coming out at 10 or 11 billion dollars I hope that's that's not the case but I won't know until I go in and actually look at the information myself well this seems to be one of the hot spots yeah. is got there and all the mods change orders and the contractor issues what about the lawsuits have you do you see that as as a, a, a challenge the lawsuit? i'm not familiar with the lawsuits so that's another issue i'm going to have to tackle when i get in there well do you think people are willing to work are are, are you bringing a fresh attractiveness to the to the, the whole endeavor because hasn't there been a bit of dismay about working with heart because of the difficulties? So how are you feeling about that? Yes, yes. Um, I'm not sure how the existing heart staff feel. I'm sure there's anxieties um, every time a new leader comes in. And I do understand that there's been numerous um, in just the last several years, seven, I believe, I think I'm going to be number eight in a short amount of time. And that does not bode well for any any um, company when you have the top leadership changing. There's no um, consistency. There's so I'm sure there's anxiety, and and I hope to quell that uh, when I get there. But I'm hoping I can bring everyone together and work as a team, not just within heart but externally. There is there is a lack of trust, as I mentioned earlier, between heart and the public. Um, the city council, the city agencies, state agencies, and other utilities. And, and I hope to try and work on that 
that trust that, you know, so we can work together because heart can't do this by themselves. They need the help of everyone, including the community. Um, so that's the only way we can get it done. The one topic your predecessors never had to address is the issue of COVID-19. Correct. Yeah. So what are you thinking about what's going to happen with COVID? Uh, is that going to force you to do some changes in the cars or is there anything you're... Right, facing? right. That That's a really good question. And I actually haven't delved, um, put much thought into that for ENV. Um, it did not really affect us too much. We are essential workers and we can't stop, you know, treating the wastewater and we can't stop picking up the trash. So we did have to adjust when people work in crews together. Everyone has to wear masks, try to social distance as much as possible when they're traveling in trucks. If we don't have spare trucks where we could have multiple trucks go to the same site and we leave the windows down and let the fresh air come through. So there are some adjustments that need to be made, but as far as within rail, I believe Hart has made adjustments. I thought I saw a list of how they have addressed it, whether it's in the office and, and in their designs, but I don't know. I don't know until I get in there. Well, you know, and it also depends on how the vaccine is going to work. I mean, you've got, Ooh. because what, this would be a costly item to, to modify anything Ooh structure of the actual rail cars. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And for, for heart, COVID has a direct impact on the income. As I mentioned earlier, the GET and the TAT, um, it shut down businesses, it shut down tourism. So that's the one of the major income sources for heart. So that has a, a devastating impact on us. So I didn't mean to raise your anxiety. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Stephanie. <laughs> Julian, I signed the contract. <laughs> but uh, it's certainly wonderful to hear you speak of these things and to, to be so committed to the kinds of relationships that are needed and certainly the trust and to bring the project back into the mainstream and the people's uh, concern of that it will be a resource for our community. I mean, yes. we in other cities. I mean, Honolulu has had no benefit of this yet. Right. I see a tremendously frustrating uh, point because we all know how wonderful it is to get on those in other places. We will be doing that too. But it takes someone like with your talents to to bring in all of this background experience and, and all of your skills. And it's a very impressive uh, portfolio that you have to offer. Oh, I hope so. I hope so. I have to say I was not a rail supporter. When I served under Peter Carlisle in one cabinet meeting, he said, you know, we are the stewards of the city. We have to be champions for heart. I mean, for rail and, and really support it. And I remember raising my hand and said, why should I support rail? I live on the windward side. I will never, never ride on that train. And his response made me feel this small. He says, uh, Lori, you're on the windward side. You have the Pali Highway. You have Lique Lique. You have Cal Highway and you have H3, four federally funded highways that you get to take advantage of whenever you need to. I said, oh, <laughs> quite well taken. And then, and then under um, Kirk Caldwell, my office is in Kapolei. And so, of course, pre-COVID, that traffic that I see, the people, the leeward side, what they have to deal with daily, it's heartbreaking. I'm, I'm coming into work 6.30 in the morning. That traffic is way into Makakilo, and it's a parking lot. And the same thing when I'm leaving to come home, now they're fighting that traffic to come back home. That quality of life, it's just, it's, ter it's, it's saddening. I know there's parents in there with young kids, 4.30 in the morning, they're sleeping in the cars because they have to try and beat the traffic, and that's not a, a way to live, so... Witnessing that firsthand, I, I am a big real supporter. We need it. Yes, yes. And for a long time, and I remember uh, decades ago that Honolulu was described as a perfect city for uh, uh, rail, like oh. because it's 
because it's kind of rectangular and flat. Oh. So, uh, I mean, this is years ago. And I, uh, I often thought when I've been in other cities that are, that have put in these metros that um, they weren't even as, uh, you know, they weren't even as good a fit as here. Right. Traffic is just worldwide known as very annoying. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I, I really appreciate your time and all of you sharing, Laurie, and, and certainly wish you very well as you make this transition. And Thank you. And so and sleep and, and, that it's not, uh, and, and that there's just so many things we're all going to be uh, working to get used to new, new circumstances so you yeah. get one more as CEO. Right. Uh, <laughs> of the rail project <laughs> heart which is no small thing. So thank you very much thank you thank you very much again later to see how things okay. are thank um, you I, I appreciate that it'd be wonderful good luck Lori. Thank, thank you thank you take care okay bye bye uh, and mahalo mahalo happy new year yeah you too happy new year okay. so uh, this has been uh the think tech kawaii programs and this is the show the state of the state of hawaii and it comes on mondays every two weeks and i look forward to seeing you there thank you for your attention and thank you so much for your aloha